So now that the weather has started to improve and the summer holidays are around the corner, now is such a great time to get into water sports such as stand-up paddleboarding, kayaking, canoeing. And if you were to get the bug, you might be starting to think that actually maybe it's instead of renting all the time and letting those costs build up, maybe now's the time to buy your own gear. But is buying your own gear really that practical, particularly with hard shell equipment? You're going to have to store it, you're going to have to transport it, so that's going to require a roof rack or a van or all these kind of things. So is inflatable the answer? In this video, I'm going to tell you five things to consider before buying an inflatable kayak to help you make the best decision as to what equipment to buy. So this kayak is the three-seater Itowit, which I bought from Decathlon in the UK. It weighs 17 kilos, fits into a backpack and blows up really quickly with the Itowit hand pump. So all the tips in this video, whilst I've basing my experience on this, on this particular kayak, should apply to any inflatable of any brand. So inflatable equipment has become really popular over the last few years as the quality of the inflatables has really shot up. So there's less chance of you tearing or popping or bursting your equipment. It's so practical, it's easy to store, takes very little footprint. All you need to do is, is take it with you and pump up on location and off you go. Sounds perfect, right? So what's the catch? So consideration number one, the backpack is not as good a feature as you think it is. As I mentioned earlier, this kayak weighs 17 kilos and the backpack that you're going to get, the straps on it are going to be extremely sharp. They're going to dig into your shoulders. It's going to have no hip support and carrying it is actually going to be a harder task than you think it's going to be. So first thing I would suggest is actually buying a little transportable trolley to put the bag backpack onto to help you wheel because you're not going to be able to carry it much further than directly from your car to the water about five meters away without serious risk of injury or, or tiring yourself out before you even get on the water. The other problem with the backpack is actually there's things like a pop-up tent or a sleeping bag. Once you put it out of the bag, getting it back into the bag in a way that's comfortable on the shoulders, packs away, quite difficult. This thing does not want to fold up as easily as it folds down if that makes sense so you will be battling with the backpack quite a lot i've even considered not even storing mine in it other than for ease of keeping all tools such as the pump and seats and rudders underneath together so for tip number two i would say consider your use case now i'm a reasonably fit and healthy guy and i cannot canoe or kayak in this for much longer than an hour and a half without my back really starting to hurt. There is limited support, back support on the inflatables. Um, if you're going to be going much further than an hour and a half or on pretty unsteady water, it's more of a serious activity for you, I would probably say steer away from inflatables. Much more likely to want a hard shell purpose-built boat essentially. I'd also consider trying to find the model you're looking to buy in a shop so you can sit in it, test out the back supports, test out if you're comfortable, whether you've got enough leg room, whether you and your, your user group can fit in the boat. Don't recommend just buying online without trying these things out and seeing them physically in person. And actually sitting in it itself, at first it's going to feel comfortable. This feels great. An hour and a half into paddling upstream, completely different story it's going to test you. So for tip number three with inflatable kayaks, you need to carefully consider how much weight you're planning on carrying. Now, the reason I bought the three-seater was because the two-seater kayak could only fit 150 kilos. Now, I'm 90, and I couldn't, I couldn't possibly bring a mate of a similar build, um, so it would be a really tight, tight fit. So I bought the three-seater, which does have a weight limit at 230 kilos, so you'll get more weight available the bigger the boat. But actually, thinking about it, I probably won't be able to get three of my mates in in the same size, even if the weight limit does allow it. It's pretty tight with, with two. It's all about weight limit when choosing your kayak. Now, also, I'm actually not that confident in taking this out by myself. I think it does require the strength of two people. I might need to try it out on, on some calmer waters if... If you've got experience with kayaks of this size, please let me know in the comment section below if you think I'd be okay. The most important 
tip a lot of people don't think about because it's inflatable, it packs away really small, is you're going to need space to blow it up so you can clean it. So once you get back from the water, you really need to keep on top of maintenance, wash it down, clean it, dry it properly before putting it away. Otherwise you'll get mold and damage and you might, you're not going to want to use it if it's moldy, which is a waste of money and it would be such a shame. So you need, you need space to be able to, at the very least, blow it up at home so that you can maintain it. It's all fine once it's dry. You can pack it away and store it in a cupboard. It does fit relatively small compared to a hard shell boat that you just can't do anything with. So what I usually do when I get back from the, from the water is I'll bring it home, I'll bring it outside, I'll rinse it down, I'll wash it, and I will leave it out to dry. It actually takes longer than you think it's going to take. It dries quicker if you blow it up. So wash it down whilst it's blown up, dry it, leave it up and let it dry. I've actually had to bring it in overnight and it sometimes takes a couple of days to really dry out, even in really hot weather. But maintenance is so, so, so key. The final consideration for me is there are so many hidden costs with inflatable kayaks and, and boats and kayaks in general that you're not necessarily going to think about when, when buying. So consider the cost of your accessories. Buying cheap usually means buying twice. So do your research, look into good reputable brands and gear, save yourself your money down, down the road. So a good life jacket is so important. There's no point risking yourself or your friends and family's lives. Wear a really good quality life jacket. Second thing would be a high quality water bag. If you're going to take this out, you're probably at the very least going to have your car keys, maybe your, your, your phone on you, maybe some camera gear, wallets, you know, invest in a very good waterproof bag. My example has a carabiner clip. I clip it onto the railings on the side so that even if the boat does turn upside down, it will still be attached to the boat. So this kayak is actually really, really wide. And I would consider if I was buying again, actually not buying a kayak paddle, but a T-bar paddle for a lot more ease of use. Because being so wide, it's, it's actually quite strenuous kayaking with, with the kayak paddle. The final hidden cost that you probably don't think about is actually a waterways license. You will need to buy a license to ride your kayak on, on the waters in the UK. So that's currently at around £45 per person. You can get group discounts and as long as the owner of the boat or there's one person in the boat with a license, you can take guests with you. So it's not, it's not too expensive, but it, that will add up if you're not careful. Now... Bonus tip for anybody who's interested in getting out paddling for the first time. If you're going on, if you're going on a bear and back journey, go upstream first. I think I'm still aching from getting that the wrong, the wrong way around last time. You, you want to go upstream first so that you can coast back downstream when you've got less energy. Now, with all that being said, I still enjoy paddling. I love getting out on the water. It's so, so peaceful. This has been so easy to use and it's really easy entry into a great sport there's lots of lots of waterways and rivers and places you can take this it's actually you could take it on the sea whether so it's perfectly safe to go out on the sea check whichever model that you are going to buy that that is the case for your model but it's so fun It'd be a great activity to get into this summer uh, with friends and family so it's great exercise it's fresh air it's getting outside seeing seeing the world from a different perspective practical to store at home it doesn't require a van or roof rack to get where you need to go I, I, I fully recommend getting involved just don't forget your pump all my kayaking gear and filming equipment is listed in the description below if you're interested in checking that out if you have any comments or questions please let me know in the comments section I'm more than happy to get back to you and help you with your decision making Really hope you can take, take this up and, and get out this summer. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel as I begin my filmmaking tour of the UK this summer. There's lots more content to come. Really, really excited. Highly recommend checking out one of my last videos where I went and hiked part of the Jurassic Coast.
really fun activity. I'm looking forward to getting out and doing a lot more hiking videos, maybe even a canoeing video. That'd be quite fun. Um, until next time, stay safe. And if you do get out in the water, happy paddling. Let, let me know where you've been. If you've got any great routes that uh, you recommend checking out, would love to know. So until then, stay safe. Goodbye. <laughs>